Okay, so what I'm going to do here is go through and actually show you guys how you can install off of a VHD or run your operating system off of VHDs. In this case here, I'm using Hyper-V, and I've gone through and I've actually created a blank drive, um, and I told it to boot off of my ISO. In this case here, I'm using a Windows 7 64-bit ISO, so like I'm booting off of a CD. And you've probably all seen this screen where you get to as you're doing your installation where it tells you to choose your language. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next here. I can select that I'd like to install now, but I don't think I want to do that quite yet. Instead, I'm going to throw a little key here so I can get to a command prompt, because in order to do this, to install to a VHD, right now I have it set up so it's, it thinks, the virtual machine thinks it has a 127 gig hard drive. And let's pretend like that's my physical drive. Um, I want to install to a VHD drive, which means I don't want it to actually be on the hard drive itself, physically installed on the hard drive. I want it to be inside of a file on that hard drive. So I'm going to hit a Shift F10, which opens up a command prompt. And I'm going to make this biggie size so you know a little better for you guys. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is the utility that we can utilize is called disk part. And it's a separate command line interface. So I'm just going to type in disk part. And it's going to launch disk part. You'll notice it says the name of the computer. And this is just a generic name that pops up during installation. Just a random called MinWin PC. So now I've got my disk part utility. And from disk part, I can do things. As a matter of fact, if you just hit a question mark, it'll tell you the different options that you have available to you as far as the different commands that you can utilize here. Uh, and again, disk part is extremely powerful because you can go through and kill a drive if you'd like, uh, modify your partitions. Like I said, it's, it's very similar to F-disk of the old DOS days, but it's on steroids. So the first thing I want to do is I need to see what drives I have available. So I'm going to type in list disk. I want to see which hard drives I have available. And it shows me that I have disk drive 0, because 0 is a number. It's 127 gigs. Hey, I told you it was 127 gigs. And it hasn't been partitioned at all, so it's 100% free. So the next thing, I'm going to do a clear screen. Whoops, I can't do a clear screen in disk part. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, since that is my disk, let me do that again, list disk. I need to select that disk to issue a command against it. Otherwise, if I issue a command, it has disk part has no idea what I'm trying to apply it to, especially if I have multiple drives. So I'm going to type in select disk 0. And now if I do a list disk, you'll notice that it has an asterisk next to it, specifying that it's been highlighted or that it's now selected. Now the following command I'm about to issue will be issued against the drive that I've selected. And that command is going to be called clean. Clean goes through and basically wipes the drive. Make sure So if you have anything on it previously, it's totally clean now. Now the next thing I need to do, you guys think about this one, when we're creating a, installing an operating system, what's the next thing after we've cleaned the drive we need to do? When I say clean, it got rid of all the volumes and all the partitions. So what do I need to do next? I need to create a new partition. Now with disk part, you'll see this also, the same thing applies with PowerShell, is that you can actually uh, uh, shorten up your commands. You don't have to type in the whole name of partition. You can. In fact, the real command that you would type in would be create partition primary. But I can also shorten this up by just typing in CRE space part pry. And you'll notice that it goes through and creates a primary partition. In fact, now I can do a, if I do a list disk, I still have my drive listed there, but now I can do a list volume, or VOL, and it shows me that I've got a volume. Notice here it's a raw partition. That's my DVD drive up here. It's a raw partition because I haven't formatted it yet. So the next step would be to what? Format, right? So I'm going to type in format. Anybody know this command? How to format from a command prompt? FS equals NTFS. And then we don't want to wait forever, do we? So I'm going to do a quick. I should say, you'll notice that after I created the partition, it actually selected that partition by default. So if I wanted, if I had multiple partitions and I wanted to format one, I would need to make sure I select that volume first or that partition first. OK, so now that it's been formatted, what's the other thing we have to do? Think about it from a GUI perspective. We format it. We need to give it a drive letter, don't we? So I'm going to say, assign this one. And since there's no other drives 
prepared here, it's going to take the first assigned drive, which would be the C drive, right? So now if I do a list volume, there's my C drive. On volume one, it's NTFS, it's 120 gigs. Okay, so now I've created, this is just like going through the GUI interface of installing with a bare drive where I said install to this drive and it goes through and creates the partition and installs the operating system on the C drive. But again, my goal is to install into a VHD. So I now have to create a file that represents the OS. And I'm going to do that by typing in create a VDisk, which is a virtual disk. And then I just give it a path of where I want to create it. Well, it's going to be a, the file is equal to on the C drive, and I'm going to create it and call it Win7SP1. And it's got to be a VHD extension. And then i got to give it a couple of other variables. With VHDs, we have several things that we can do with it. First of all, we have to specify the size, just like we do when we create a virtual drive in a virtual machine. We have to say how big it's going to be. And then we also have to specify if it's, if it's uh, expandable or if it's a static size. So if, as I mentioned before, if I select static, then it's going to take up the entire space. That VHD file, if I say it's 200 gigs, boom, I'm going to get 200 gig file, even though it's only running 5 gigs of information. So I want to make this one expandable. So my switches here are going to be maximum equals, and I have to put this in, let's say I'm going to do a 200 gig partition. So that'd be 200,000. And then the type, hopefully you guys can see this, hopefully a little wrap here, is going to equal to expandable. Hit enter. So it created that file. In fact, if I, well, you'll see it pop up here in just a second. Uh, the next thing I need to do is now I need to, I've created that file. Now think of that file as a hard drive. Okay? Um, so just like a regular hard drive, the next thing I need to do is what? Just like we did before, create a partition, format it. But what did I have to do before I created the partition and formatted it? I just select it, right? Okay, so I'm going to do a select a virtual disk and the file, which is going to be the path, is equal to C colon backslash, what do I call it, win7 uh, sp1.vhd. It's now been selected. Now I'm going to attach it as a drive. So attach B disk. And now it's attached. And again, if we scroll back up and look here, here I signed it. Wait, wait. Here we go. So I did a clean. I didn't have to attach it uh, because it was a physical drive up here. But you'll notice that after I cleaned it, I went through and then created my partition. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to specify create part prime. And then I'm going to type in to format it, fs equals ntfs, and it's going to be a quick format. And then finally, I need to give it a drive letter. So I'm going to do an assign letter, and we'll make it B, B for virtual. So now if I do a list volume, you'll notice now I've got my 127 gig, and here's that virtual drive or that VDisk that's been mounted. It thinks it's 200 megs. Okay, so now that's done, I can close this down and continue on with my installation. In terms, I'm going to do a custom install, and there are my partitions. One being the virtual disk, the other one being the physical drive. I'm going to install to the virtual disk. Now you'll notice that when I highlight it, it does come down here and says that it can't be installed there. Don't believe it. It's just pretending. What's going to happen is it's going to install there, but it's going to actually install some options on this first partition that gives me the ability to dual boot. So it's going to put, and back in the XP days, we referred to it as the boot INI file. Now it's just, a, we actually modify it with the BDC edit, I believe, is a utility that we utilize to change the boot order. So I'm going to select the 200 gig partition, hit next, and then it's going to start the installation. Now after that's done, I would then boot up, I go through and do all my updates and everything, and I'm going to let this, uh, for the recording here, I'm going to pause it and we'll come back and I'll show you how to do uh, the server here a little bit later.